Good morning for morning devotion. Um, I thought we'd uh, continue on Revelation chapter 14. But before we do, we'll have a look at Revelation 1 again and a few verses down. Why I I begin with uh, this is because um, to emphasize that uh, like we learned uh, yesterday when I read from Desire of Ages that the Holy Spirit was described as the third person of the Godhead and uh, we can find words in the Bible which confirm that there are three persons in the Godhead and Revelation 1 is one of them uh, Revelation chapter 1 if we come down to verse Four, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4 John to the seven churches which are in grace which are in Asia grace be unto you and peace from him that is and he and which was and which is to come so this is one of the persons of a Godhead and from the seven spirits which are before the throne this is the other person which, is, which will be the Holy Spirit and the third is in verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the witness and the first begotten of the dead. So in verse, so in verse 4 and 5, you find the three described in verse 4 and 5. Even when the, in Revelation, when the, in Isaiah and Revelation, they describe the same thing when they say, holy, 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 which is three times. And uh, even when Jesus was on the cross, he said, my God, my God, twice. So he was the third. And so even in the Bible, we, we, can, we can see in the language of the Bible that there are three persons of the Godhead. When I go on a script, when I go on a look at it, it talks about seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Okay. okay. So that sort of goes along with yes. what you're saying. Like it says seven spirits, but it's really seven characteristics. Spirit, which are the characteristics of God. Okay, that would be a good uh, verse to go with that. Yes. So yesterday we found out that the Holy Spirit has a finger, that he writes the laws into our heart. That's what we found out yesterday. And even when Jesus said, I will send you another comforter, Jesus is one comforter, he said he'll send another comforter, which means it's not him, it's someone else apart from him. So Revelation chapter 14, and the same Holy Spirit can write his character in our frontal lobe, in our, in our forehead, that's uh, what we learned yesterday. So let's come down to verse 4, uh, verse 3, sorry, Revelation chapter 14. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne. Why do you think it says a new song? They went a lot of <laughs> so it's a new song that they've never heard before in heaven. And before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. The Spirit of Prophecy calls it it's a song of experience. A song they sing, no one else, only the hundred and forty-four thousand went through this experience and no one else. And that's why no one else could learn that song except 144,000 because it's a song of their experience which no one else went through except 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth verse 4 these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins which means they have a uh, they have a pure gospel these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. So they don't follow the Lamb only in heaven, but where? On, on earth as well. And to follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes, uh, Paul uh, describes it in a good way, in a nice way. Um, whatsoever you eat, whatsoever you drink, whatsoever you do, do it all for the glory of God. These were redeemed from among men, which means 
They were translated as living saints, redeemed from among men. They were not redeemed from the dead, they were redeemed from men who were living. And so they were living saints and they were translated, which means they did not see death. Being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. What does first fruit mean? person needed to harvest the field, he had to take the, the piece of corn or wheat <coughs> and wave it before the sanctuary service in the temple before he could harvest the crop. Okay, yes. And so the, the first fruits, what uh, do the, what do the name, um, well the name first fruits means first fruits, but what, uh, what does it actually indicate? The harvest Yes. Uh, let's turn to Numbers chapter 18, verse 12, and maybe we have an idea of what first fruits. What God really wanted the Israelites to pick out of the first fruits. <coughs> Numbers chapter 18, verse 12. And the best of the oil, and all the best of the wine, and of the wheat, the first fruits of them, which they shall offer unto the Lord, them shall I have I given thee. So what are the first fruits? They are the best. So the first fruits, the 144,000, they are the best. And so in, uh, so in, the, in the Old Testament, there was... Uh, the first fruits were, as uh, Michael said, the uh, first fruits were usually presented before the before the priest as a wave offering or sheaf offering. And when the priest said, and the priest approved, then the harvest could could, could take place. Usually, usually when like, when you're growing corn, <coughs> the actual first few cobs are the best. So the biggest, they, they seem to grow. You know. They don't get any bugs in because I first off the range sort of thing. That's what I found with corn. The first few cobs are really just about perfect. Thank you for that uh, insight from a farmer. <laughs> I'll, I'll read from the Desire of Ages of how Spirit of Prophecy describes the first fruit. Desire of Ages, page 785, paragraph 4. Christ arose from the dead as the first fruits of those that slept. So Christ was the first fruits of those who died. And so the 144,000 would be the first fruits of, of the living. So we have two different first fruits. And and Jesus, we know that Jesus, when Jesus was when Jesus rose from the dead, they tried to touch Jesus. What did Jesus say? I need to go in. Show myself, present myself to the to the Father. So the first fruit had to be approved first before the harvest could take place. <clears throat> he was the antitype of the wave sheaf, or the wave offering, or the sheaf offering. And his resurrection took place on the very day when the wave sheaf was to be presented before the Lord. So it was the very day before when the priest on earth was supposed to uh, present uh, the first fruits before the priest. Jesus rose, rose on that very day. <coughs> For more than a thousand years, this symbolic ceremony had been performed. From the harvest fields, the first heads of ripened grain were gathered, and when the people went up to Jerusalem to the Passover, the sheaf of first fruits was waved as a thank offering before the Lord. Not until this was presented could the sickle be put to the grain and it be gathered into sheaves. So it had to be uh, shown to the priest first before he could give the okay for the harvest. And so the same thing with the 144,000. As we go back to Revelation uh, chapter 14. They lived a long way from Jerusalem and could be quite a trip to business. Yes. <coughs> like they had no motor cars, so they would have had to go by donkey or walk. Yes. So it could take three three days to get there, three days to get back before they can harvest. Yes. 
-hmm. So when we see the way, way Michael described it, uh, there could be no second fruit. It had, there had to be a first fruit. <coughs> and so there was no plan B for God. If, G, if God did, if God the Father did not approve of the first fruit, there was no harvest. Yeah. <coughs> that corn had got lost or got eaten on the way, or that wheat, then he wouldn't be able to harvest his field. Yes. So they had to, they had to be the best. And so now we, we understand why well, there, there cannot and there cannot be a harvest until the first fruit is is um, is presented. And so even in Revelation 14, from verse 14 down, is a harvest. Uh, Revelation 14, verse 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one set like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his head hand a sharp sickle. And so if you read further down from 15 down to 20, there are three angels which help in this harvest. But these three angels, which are the extra angels, there were three before, and there's the last three, uh, the last three, these three angels don't, cannot do their work until the first fruits are presented, until the, the 144,000 are presented. And so how, how do the 144,000 become the 144,000? They gain the victory over the beast. They gain the victory over the beast, and what makes them gain the victory over the beast? The solution is in Revelation 14 and verse six. six. Revelation 14 and verse six. And I saw another angel. How do we know that this is the first angel? Because you got the third angel just down a little bit. Okay, so we come down to verse 9. It says, and the third angel followed, which means that there are two angels before that. So we know that verse 6 is the first angel. And I saw another angel fly, fly where? In the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. And so we come to the question, what is the everlasting gospel? Paul says it's the power of God for salvation. Okay, so we know that verse Romans chapter 1 verse 16 tells us that Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is what? It is the power. There is a power in the gospel to what? <laughs> to change lives. So I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. And to <coughs> salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So salvation means to save. Matthew chapter one verse twenty one to save us from from our sin. And verse um, so Revelation. So we see Romans chapter one verse sixteen and verse seventeen. Maybe it's good that we read verse seventeen of Romans chapter one just to give us an indication of what the effect of the gospel has in our lives. <coughs> Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 For therein, in what? In what was described in verse 16 which was the gospel. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. So in the gospel the righteousness can be revealed. So can the righteousness be where how can we see righteousness? In the, life. in the lives in the lives of people. Christ within the hope of glory is the gospel. Yes. That's so right. In chapter Christ page eighteen it says we need a power from above. And it says that power is Christ. Thank you. So we find that without Christ, that righteousness cannot be revealed in, in our lives. Therein is righteousness revealed. And so we find this angel having the everlasting gospel. What does it mean to have the everlasting gospel? Possess it. Possess it. It's a part of you. Christ in you the hope of glory. It's a part of you. So, so this angel 
possesses the everlasting gospel. And then what does he do? To preach. Let us go back to Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. So sometimes we we have it the other way around. We try to preach the gospel before we have the gospel. And that's why the work still hasn't been finished. Because you need to possess the gospel before you can preach the gospel. And so, and another interesting point is this angel fly in the midst of heaven. What does it mean to fly in the midst of heaven? Between earth and heaven, yes. It's talking about connection, isn't it? Yes. It's talking about connection with the Godhead. Yes, it's a connection. Um, when Jesus was in the cross, on the cross, the Bible says, and Jesus was in the midst of the other two the thieves, and even in the seven golden candlesticks, the Bible, the Revelation chapter 1 says, Jesus was in the midst of the candlesticks. So to find in the midst there's a connection, like Michael said, the connection is Jesus. The connection between heaven and earth is Jesus. This in heaven, the midst of heaven, is a place where Lucifer claims to be the God of, or the Prince of. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 tells us that the Prince of the power of the air worketh disobedience in the children. Why do we have disobedient children? The prince of the power of the air, the airwaves, the internet, the radio, our mobile phone, the power of the air. He was even allowed that position from the cross. Like he was allowed to stay in the position, not, not in heaven, but in, the, in between heaven and earth. <coughs> from the cross when the angels decided that they would have nothing more to do with them because that's how he went to that meeting with Job because that meeting was outside of heaven. <coughs> Thank you very much. And so we find that uh, in verse 7, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. So when you have the gospel, when the, the gospel is a part of you, the effects or the results of having the gospel as a part of you mean, automatically means you can you will fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountain of waters. <coughs> now, when we have the gospel, when we have Jesus in our lives. Um, Uh, we would uh, automate. We would. Uh, we would probably think that there would. There wouldn't need to be any other message. As Paul said, <coughs> the, he determined not to know anything save, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So why do you think there was a need of a second and a third angel? Because uh, situations um, changed and developed. <coughs> So the second angel <clears throat> indicates that there's been a change taken place as a result of the preaching of the gospel among the churches. And so God's people needed um, to be aware of that so that they could um, act accordingly. And then the, with the third angel, <clears throat> Um, there was actually a development of understanding as a result of accepting the gospel. Thank you, Neil. Also, um, <coughs> like Christ has more than one name, because <coughs> one name can't fitly describe the activities that he does. And so God here is so immense and so <coughs> magnifying that one, <coughs> one angel can't explain it all. It has to be. It's more for our minds, more than God's mind, but we can't just 
fathom it in one little sentence. We have to have explanations. That's why the whole Bible is written, because we need great understanding, I guess. Thank you. <coughs> So the second angel says that there followed another angel saying Babylon is fallen, is fallen. So when it says Babylon is fallen, the great city, does that mean that, uh, what does that suggest? That suggests that Babylon is already a part of your life. You cannot fall unless there's, there's uh, Babylon within you. So Babylon, what, the, what does Babylon indicate? What we in the Bible? Who, where was Babylon? If I if I can write it here, Babylon. Who was the enemy of Israel? <coughs> so Babylon, we would find the first Babylon was was the nation Babylon, and the, and then there came what was the second Babylon? Personal Babylon, I would suppose. Had the city Babylon on the river Euphrates. Yes, this was the city, and then which is the system. Babylon is a system, and so there was a spiritual power. The system Babylon, but all these all these Babylonian powers are made up of individuals who have the spirit of Babylon within them. Which is the spirit of Satan. So it's the it's the spirit of the mystery of iniquity. And where did this where did this spirit originate? In the mind of Lucifer. Every, yeah, in the mind of Lucifer. So this spirit originated in the mind of Lucifer and and we, if, if, and we find in Revelation 14 the if we turn to verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. So there was a time in heaven when Lucifer didn't have patience. He was waiting for something to happen that, that would not happen. He was waiting to be promoted, but he did not get promoted and he lost patience. And so, here are they that keep the commandments of God, so he didn't keep the commandments of God, and have the faith of Jesus, the faith of Jesus. So he lost faith. <coughs> he lost the faith of Jesus. He lost faith in Jesus. Yes, he lost faith in Jesus, and he lost the faith of Jesus. Yes, uh, that, that's a very interesting question. <coughs> You, you mentioned that Lucifer lost patience. Uh, he was waiting for something to happen, yes. but it didn't happen, so he went about um, to make it happen. Yes. And that's exactly the same situation with Judas. Yes. He was waiting for Christ to become. So Lucifer. And so Judas, who do we know uh, other people who tried to make things happen when they were waiting? Abraham? Even Saul, he was waiting for the sac for a sacrifice. <laughs> he performed the sacrifice himself. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Abraham was fortunate that he had time to repent. Yes, <laughs> it was Judas and Saul. Yes. Uh, well, they had time, but they refused. Yeah. And so here we find the the spirit of of iniquity or the spirit of Babylon. Um, Babylon is not a a place, mm -hmm. it's a principle, that's me a boy yes. Babylon is a principle, it's a system, <coughs> not a place, yes. or a, um, yeah, it's a system. In, a, in actual fact, like you could say God allows <coughs> this system, in actual fact the people of this world allow this system, and God is trying to counterwork this system by uh, an example of the gospel of his people. He did it through Christ, and now he's doing it through his people. So, <coughs> so God counterworks what Satan is doing in the nations by having a people that will uh, experience and spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because 
um, Babylon is confusion, but God is order mm. and true organization. And wherever you have Babylon, you will have confusion and disorder. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so we had this. We have this. The result of the, of having the gospel is we you have the patience of the saints. You are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And so we. When you have the faith of Jesus, we wait for for God to promote us instead of us promoting ourselves. And that is a that is a good principle that King David mentions in Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7. That promotion does not come from the east or the west, yeah. but promotion is of the Lord. And so he they have. Uh, the saints of those who have the gospel, the everlasting gospel, the true gospel, they have the patience of the saints. They wait for God to promote them instead of them promoting themselves. Like the stories that we found out, uh, we know about Lucifer, Judas, Abraham, and, and Saul. Uh, they wait for God. They have the patience to wait for God. They have the patience of the saints. And here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So. So we find that the true gospel should, can develop within us the patience in order to keep the gospel and also have the faith, not only faith in Jesus, but the faith of Jesus. So we, so we, we find that, uh, that in order to be part of this, of this movement, and we find if you, so if you read Revelation 14, there are only six angels. Where is the seventh? Revelation 18. Why do you think, uh, in God's wisdom, He put it outside Revelation 14? As, as Neil said, there's other developments now. Babylon has covered the whole world now, so the, the gospel is, is, is having to have an increase, and it also needs the latter rain to bring it to fruit, bring it to harvest. Okay, so, Revelation 18, is it a, a new message? It's really only three messages. Well, there's new light with the Revelation 18 angel. Okay. Especially on God's character. Yes. It's an extension of the three. Yeah. But it doesn't disavow the three, it just goes with the three. It says the three angels have an effect now that they couldn't have before. Okay. Revelation 18, verse 1. Maybe we'll close with this verse. <coughs> Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1. <coughs> and after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power. So it's, it's, uh, it's a repeat of Revelation 14.6. <coughs> For I saw another angel having the everlasting gospel, which is the power. So he, so this fourth angel also has the everlasting gospel, which is the power of God. And the earth was lightened with his glory, which is what? The glory of God. Which is the glory of God. When Moses asked God to show him his glory, what did God do? I will proclaim my name before you and then and when he proclaimed his name what was it mercy goodness it was his character so so this fourth angel <coughs> yes the character of God so and also in Christ object lesson we we find that this this message the message of the character of God or the revelation of his character will be the last message of mercy. And so, and as Neil was uh, reminding us, or uh, giving us some new insight into his character last night, uh, this is the message that will finish the work and that will lighten the earth with his glory. Before we close with a, with a song,
Any final thoughts before we close? Yes, sir. Uh, right. Revelation that have sounded have lost a lot of power since they began because the gospel has not been treasured um, as it should have been among the custodians and as a result um, the power the power of the preaching of the everlasting gospel has gone out of it and so God is bringing in the fourth angel a fresh impudence or fresh um, revelation of the gospel in a different setting in different ways and it's the same gospel but when God brings a new um, a new presentation of the gospel he may, he just doesn't repeat what everything has been in the past he brings it in a new way fresh way. It, it seems the way Revelation 14 is written, it seems like it's only when the 144,000 preach the gospel then the work will be finished. The way Revelation 14 is written. Because it's as soon after he, he described Revelation uh, 144,000 and then the and then the angels are, are described following. But another good point that uh, we can learn is when they had living messengers, the gospel was with power. Yeah, that's right. But when the, when the second generation and third generation were only reading about yeah. books from the the fourth spiritual forefathers, it lost its power. Yeah. And so there had to be another living messenger, which came in 1888. And so it seems when it's like like the nation of Israel as well when they were. Yeah, that's a good point because the children. The children of the pioneers never carried on like the parents mm. did. Yes. And it's the same today. We have a living message in the fourth angel, mm. but our children don't have yes. don't have that zeal and yes. and desire for it like yes. the parents do. Yes. The children are way, way behind. Yes. Mm. Thank you for all your contribution and thoughts. <coughs> 